Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Once again, this is a very impromptu video, but one that I find very important. And um, it's about fake news and propaganda. And I'm just going to ask you guys, when are we going to be tired of fake news? When are we actually going to say no to propaganda? The mainstream media is not the only culprit. In fact, most of the truthers are also pushing fake news and propaganda, except for because they label themselves as a truther, we take it as fact without doing our own research. If you wanna be sovereign, if you wanna have control over your life, then you need to take control over your thoughts over your actions and over your character. The way you do that is through research. Research, 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 and listening to your own in intuition and your own gut. A friend sent me a post from a group. I will not say the friend's name and I don't know what group this is and I don't know who wrote this post, but this post is full of lies. Lies that can be proven as lies, blatant lies, if you just do your own research. Okay, I'm going to read it to you guys, and then we're going to discuss it. I had the privilege of living abroad in multiple countries and experiencing various cultures. I've always had a heart for traveling and wanted to learn and encounter as much as possible. However, through my ignorance, I engaged in many spiritual practices that I shouldn't have yoga being one of them. I want to address the fact that Christians should not be doing yoga. If you were to ask a Christian from India if they practice yoga, you would get a resounding no. I'm going to stop right there. Most Hindus in India don't practice yoga. And if you actually had traveled to India and lived there for a very long time, you would know this. But I think the person who wrote this does know this, but they're trying to manipulate and push false news, lies. And if you are a Christian, isn't being truthful part of your commandments from God? So why are you lying? For Indians in yoga, a very, or for Indians in India, of whether they're Hindu, Christian, Muslim, whatever, a very small percentage of them actually practice yoga. This is because historically, the practice of yoga was reserved for the Brahmin caste. If you did your research, you would know this. The Hatha Yoga Pradikapa, which I've spoken about on my channel, talks about this too. It's a 2000 year old text. For most of the generations of Indian culture, yoga practitioners, these Brahmins, were celibate. They lived as monks. They didn't even get married. Brahmins now have only been really allowed to, Brahmins in the yoga world have only really been allowed to marry in the last 150 years. It's a very small group of people. So if you think about the role of a monk in Christendom, again, it's a very small group of people. Most Christians aren't monks. Same with the Hindus in India. So when you hear a Christian in India saying they don't practice yoga, most Hindus don't practice yoga either. This has been a topic of conversation in many conferences with Sharat, that most locals in India do not practice yoga. Most people in the world that practice yoga today are Westerners. So there you go. You just manipulated a truth. You gaslit a truth. That's evil. That's so evil. All right. The word yoga means to yoke or to unite and is a Hindu ritual of poses that invites spirits to become one with you that date back 5,000 years and is found in the Hindu Bible, the Vedas. No, it doesn't mean that. If we're looking at the word yoke, and if you read the Yoga Sutras, the 5,000 year old text, nothing is mentioned about spirits. The only thing it's, that spirit that is mentioned is God, the one God, one God not spirits. And when you look at the word yoke, you're looking at unit uniting yourself with God, the one God, understanding how your nature is your, your GPS system to, un, to see where you're attached to material things and nature instead of God. But the word yoga actually doesn't mean to yoke. That's a huge misunderstanding. The word yoga means mental focus, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. So there you go. There's another lie. The word yoga actually means mental focus. 
not spirits, not inviting spirits in. Yoga give, gives legal rights to the kundalini spinner spirit to enter your life. Well, kundalini is the Christ consciousness. So if you're denying kundalini, then you're denying the Christ. The kundalini spirit is a serpent spirit that moves from the base of the spine upward the more you participate in yoga or other new age practices. I've said this before. If you see the, the controllers, the bad guys have to tell you who they are. They have to tell you. If you see the word new age, they're telling you they're, they're part of the cabal. Nobody in the yoga world uses the word new age. That's what the controllers use. So they're, they're, she just, or he, whoever wrote this, just told you they're part of the, the black cats by using the word new age. All right. It gets entwined with your neurological system. And when it reaches the crown of your head, it activates your pineal gland causing enlightenment and is sometimes referred to the third eye. However, this is why the Kundalini spirit is referred to as the false Holy spirit. No, it's not. It tries to mimic the Holy Spirit's power. And we all know the serpent came, came to twist the truth and deceive humanity and pull us away from God. Um, no, nobody calls Kundalini the false Holy Spirit. Only you do. Only you who are trying to derail people from their own spiritual work. And um, the serpent was created by God. This is so idiotic. Think about science. Think about photosynthesis. I know everybody watching has studied photosynthesis. We studied it in the ninth grade. Darkness can't create anything. Only the light can. Only the light can. So serpents, snakes, goats, owls were created by the same creator who created you. It's not their fault that the cabal tried to invert them. But Kundalini is described as a certain because of the way it moves, but it's not. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Christ consciousness. All right. Let me go on. So if you're a Christian taking the part, the part in yoga, the Hindu ritual of, of working, yoking yourself with spirits, ask yourself, does this sound like something you ought to be engaged in? Should you really be yoking yourself with a serpent? Again, nowhere in the yoga sutras does it talk about you engaging with spirits. Stop lying. This is full of pathological lies. And your God and Christianity tells you not to lie. So riddle me that. Why are you lying? I'm so sick of these people in the truth or community. There's a ton of them who lie about everything. They just lie, 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 lie. It's a lie. And you don't have to take my word for it. Read the Yoga Sutras. Read the Hatha Yoga Pratikapa. Show me where it talks about spirits because it doesn't. As a, as a Christian, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is very clear that we are not to worship other gods or enact idolatry. Oh, like the way Christians worship the Bible? That idolatry? Unfortunately, by doing yoga poses, you are knowingly or unknowingly part participating in the worship of other gods and goddesses, giving them legal access to take control of aspects of your life. I know some of you think you are just doing exercise, but you can't separate yoga from its hin Hindu roots. Yes, you can. Unfortunately, you need to repent and ask the Lord to set you free. You are not worshiping other gods in your yoga practice. And, and yoga transcends all religions. Yoga is just about you working through your shit to find peace with God. The practice of yoga tells us that our nature, our property attaches to things that are not permanent. And because we attach to those, th those things, we separate from God. That's what causes suffering. The practice of yoga helps you work through those attachments to earthly things so that you can find the peace of God. In fact, in the Yoga Sutras and Sri Swami Sachidananda's commentary on the Yoga Sutras, he speaks about this. When you have fear, when you have anxiety, that's showing you that you're not trusting in God. That's showing you where your faith is waning. How holy can you get? Now, I want to address as well, because I've spent a lot of time in India, been multiple, multiple times. I know a lot of Hindus. Not once as a Hindu told me that I'm going to hell for not believing what they believe. Not once has a Hindu threatened me. Not once has a Hindu made me feel like I am inadequate in the presence of God. Not once. Every Hindu I know, every Hindu I've come into contact with has treated me like an equal, has treated me with respect, 
has treated me with grace. They're living and breathing examples of what a loving God looks like. But multiple Christians have threatened me and multiple people. Multiple Christians are out there telling people they're going to go to hell for not believing exactly what they believe, perpetrating this fear. Hindus never perpetrate fear, but Christians do. How much blood is on the hands of the Christian faith? What about the Crusades, the Inquisition? Do you know that there are more body counts in Christianity than any other religion in the world? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you try to damn a practice to hell when your faith is responsible for so much hell on earth? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. This is not okay. And you know why? You know why the controllers don't want you practicing yoga? Let me talk about this with the mind. Patabi Joyce even spoke about this. The second sutra of the yoga sutras is yoga chitta Rodaha. That's Sanskrit. It means that yoga is about getting rid of your thoughts. So let's, let's elaborate on that. What does that actually mean? Patabi Joyce spoke about this. This means the more you practice yoga, the more you're able to recognize your thoughts for what they are, just thoughts. So therefore, you start to control your own mind and not allow others to control your mind. So if you're practicing yoga, things like mind control won't work on you. They won't work on you. So what do the controllers like to do? They like to mind control you. So this fake news, this propaganda is put out there. So you stop practicing yoga so they, they can continue to mind control you. So they can continue to drive us into a Luciferian society. And this shit has to stop. Again, I ask you, when, it, when is fake news going to be enough? When are you going to be tired of fake news? Because the fake news on the media isn't the only fake news. It's all over the truth or community. It's all over. In a video I released that's releasing earlier today, I talked about junk conspiracy. This is junk conspiracy. That's all that is, is junk conspiracy. It's junk. And you have the power to reject that by doing your own research. Don't take my word for it. Read the Yoga Sutras for yourself. Read the Hatha Yoga Pradikapa for yourself. Don't listen to what a white person or a Westerner or you know, a, a new age, if you want to call it that person, is saying. Just read the material for yourself. Read the Vedas for yourself. Read the Upanishads for yourself. Understand what Kundalini is for yourself. It's Christ consciousness. So if you deny Kundalini, you are absolutely denying the Christ. That's just from research. Research it. Stop letting this cabal control us, even in the truther community, because most of the truther community is cabal. They're trying to derail it. They're trying to derail our ascension. Now, I think a lot of people love this stuff. This is just my opinion because they have a lot of hate in their heart. They have a lot of hate in their heart. The person who wrote this obviously has a lot of hate in their heart, in my opinion. And so if you encourage people who have hate in their heart to do their own research, to see the truth, they're not going to want to do that because they want to keep perpetrating that hate they feel in their heart. I can't fix your heart. If you have a hateful heart, that's between you and God. Most people who don't have a hateful heart want the truth. People who don't have a hateful heart want to do their own research. People who don't have a hateful heart don't want to condemn others like this person is doing. So start doing your research. This is a lie. You can look all this up and find very easily that this is all lies. It's lies. You know, this person tried to gaslight you by talking about traveling the world and living in different cultures. They didn't tell you if they lived in India or not. They didn't tell you how long they were in India. I can tell you exactly how long, how many trips I've taken to India if you want to know. I can show you pictures. I can show you witnesses. I can show you my class registration cards. They didn't tell you that though. So they're gaslighting. They, they started off gaslighting. See it for what it is. And a part of yoga too is learning how to see the truth through the illusion. So that's another reason why they don't want you to practice yoga. They don't want you to see the truth through the illusion. They want you to keep believing the illusion. So I'm just going to put that out there. If anybody knows who wrote this, you're free to send this video to them because I'm calling them out for lying. 
And hopefully, if this person is a good person that just got stuck up in propaganda themselves and fake news themselves, they'll offer an apology once they do their own research. But I, the way that it was written, I don't think they are. I think they're part of the controllers, my opinion, just the way they've written that. They're trying to derail you and me and all of us from going forth density positive, for bringing the Christ back on this earth. This is something to think about. The fake news has to stop. It has to stop. We got to stop the fake news. We do that by ignoring it. When this shit's put out, ignore it. It's fake news. Or you can respond with all the lies that this person said with the actual truth. All right. Okay. So now I'm about to go film with Stephanie. We're going to be uh, doing an episode of Prior of Sion, which we will be releasing tomorrow and then tomorrow we're going to be filming with emmy again for our next shadow work series we might talk a little bit about this too tomorrow um i am going to disable the comments on this one because there are a lot of bots out there that are out there trying to stop this stuff i just really want every single person out there to and i know most of you are most of you watching you're doing a great job you know i i do research that's what i like to I love to research but i i tell you in almost every episode do your own research do research what i'm telling you this person didn't tell you to go research what they're saying. They're just telling you to believe what they're saying. I've never once told you to believe what I'm saying. I want you to research what I'm saying. I want you to be sovereign. I want to hear what your research says. Because I understand that we're all in this together. We are all just walking each other home. Not one person is more important than the other. But people, when they say this and they say like, they don't tell you to do their, their, your own research and they try to gaslight you into believing what they believe, that's a bad person. If someone tells you their tarot cards are never wrong, they're always right, that's a bad person. That's a bad person. You don't want to follow that. You want your own sovereignty. Take your sovereignty back. Reject this fake news on all parts. All right, guys. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for all the support. I know you guys get it, but let's try to encourage everyone to take their damn sovereignty back and stop believing this bullshit. Okay? All right. And to all the Hindus out there and all the Brahmins out there, I, on behalf of this person, I want to apologize to you for this terroristic, violent thread, whatever you want to call it. I want to apologize to you. I know the truth. I've experienced you. I've researched. You're wonderful people. You've been nothing but kind to me. You've never made me feel like I was anything less than you, even though I, I'm a Westerner, even though I'm Anglican. You've never made me feel that way. You've always welcomed me into your homes. You've always got welcomed me to your homes with food. You've given me gifts. You've hugged me. You've helped me. And not once did you ever try to scare me into submitting to your culture and to your beliefs. And that, in my opinion, is the true face of God. The true face of God is not terror. It's not fear, it's love. And that is what the Hindu people have shown me, is love and respect. And so for the Hindu people, I do want to apologize for that. That's not how most of us think of you. Most of us love you and we respect you. And I, for one, am incredibly grateful for this practice that your ancestors created because it has changed my life. It has given me purpose. It has helped me understand my own suffering, my own sorrow. It has brought me closer to God. And I thank you for that. I thank you for sharing that with the world.